Hi, I'm Gabby, and welcome to Gabbing with Gabby. In this series, we sit down with fellow wet on wet oil painters who brought their knowledge and talent to the world via the internet. It's a chance for them to put down their paintbrushes and to get to talk about themselves. And it's a great opportunity for all of us to get to know them a little bit better. Our guest today is Jeff. So Jeff, can you please introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Jeff uh, of Jeff's Oil Paintings. Uh, I live in uh, Hanover, Pennsylvania, uh, and uh, uh, happy to be here and uh, very grateful that you asked me uh, to uh, to come and, and answer some questions for you. Looking forward yes. to it. And thank you very much for being here. It's um, I very much appreciated. Okay, let's get right into this. Paint. Do you prefer to paint with oil? Yes, I only paint in oils uh, unless I do a gesso acrylic uh, background. Uh, but uh, that's all I've ever used is oils. Uh, I've been painting for five years and uh, I've never tried anything else. So this is all I got. Maybe in the future we'll expand it. But right now I just paint strictly in oils. You're lucky you landed right in the right spot, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Understand. <laughs> yeah. Subject, do you prefer landscapes or? Yeah, I'm a landscape painter, landscape and seascapes. Um, never, I've never been a, a, a be able to draw or sketch or do anything art wise. Um, so yeah, strictly landscapes and seascapes. Uh, I can't, I don't do people uh, or animals, but maybe in the future. But uh, for now, landscapes and seascapes it suits me. I always tell people they don't realize that there's a huge difference between drawing and painting. Yo, big difference. Big yeah. difference. Yeah, I can't draw at all. <laughs> I'm kind of there with you two, actually. Um, so you kind of touched on this, but how long have you been painting? I've been painting for five years. Um, dab about 20 some years ago, I dabbled in it a wee bit. Um, and it was no fun. Uh, but uh long hiatus and then started up five years ago pretty much i felt as a beginner but uh, a lot of the things that i will you know looked at back then i watched bob ross of course since the 80s um stuck with me and i just felt it was time to you know try and see if i could actually do it this time and you know, be uh, persistent with it awesome and how did you kind of come back into it um like i said i i always watched bob ross since the 80s um always fascinated how he could paint something so quickly and how how cool it was and it looked like anybody could do it you know um so uh i tried then you know failed miserably and then after a while after a long layoff i was like you know what i still had all my paints my all my stuff that really wasn't used that much and uh just said you know what i'm going to give this a go and just pulled everything out and started again and actually my first painting was uh better than the first one that i did many you know 25 years ago almost so uh it was uh I actually have it right here if you want to take a look at it. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I thought you might ask. That's my very first painting I ever did. Uh, and That's this, awesome. You still yeah. have it. I love to show it to people to say, you know, hey, you can start here, and this is where you can go. But I just, you know, I was looking to do something. It just called me, you know, get the, get your paints out, learn how, you know. So I jumped back into everything, and um, uh, it was a little slow go. It took me a while, but then after after a little bit, things came together. Awesome. Um, have you done any other um, training besides sort of teaching yourself or kind of how did you learn your bulk of your knowledge? Um, really uh, through you know watching Bob. I followed along with Bob my first year. Um, uh, and then when when I noticed I was starting to get a little better uh, was when um, uh, Steve Ross and Dana Jester had got back together to start doing their teachings again. This is in 2019, I do believe. And they had done one workshop in Indiana. And then uh, Justin Wozniak, I don't know, do you know Justin, paint with Justin? Um, I don't. Okay, check him. He's a great artist as well. He's fantastic. But he has an art uh, studio in New Jersey. And uh, Steve and Dana were going to do a workshop there. So I said, like, wow, it's pretty close to me, you know, three hours or so. Um, let me go. I want to go to it. So I signed up for it and went. And there were, it was nice because in their workshops today, you know, it's 50, 6, 100 people there. Here we had about 20. So it was very limited. I got great individual attention uh, from each one and from Justin, um, which was great. Um, and uh, when I when I left there, I had a, just a, you know a bit of confidence. Um, they seemed to be impressed with what I did, even though it was still not the best. But um, and I just got a good boost of confidence. And from there, uh, everything just got better very quickly for me. They they put some tied some things together for me that I wasn't getting, and then it clicked, and everything got that was a big turning point for me. Was doing that workshop, so I highly recommend them. If you 
if anybody can get to one, they're fantastic. That was going to be my question, if you felt like you really learned stuff from it. Absolutely. And, you know, again, it was nice that there were only about uh, 20 of us. Um, so, again, we got great one-on-one -on -one time. They could be able to stop by every easel and spend some time with you and chat with you. Uh, and, again, just Steve, Dana, and uh, Justin, who, uh, uh, again, is a fantastic painter. And, yeah, that was it was definitely a, a, a huge turning point for me. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, how long before you sort of felt like you had a grasp on oil paint? Still don't have a grasp on oil painting. <laughs> um, I, I don't think you ever do. I, you know, I, I can paint, but every time I go to my easel, there's that doubt. You know, you're like, Ugh. you know, I, it, the pressure to make it at least as good as the last one you painted, which is impossible. You know, we it's like anything, two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not uh, nothing is mastered, um, but things get better. And uh, I think as soon as you think that you got it, uh, is when you grow, your growth stops. Um, I, you know, it, I'm also a professional trombone player. Um, and, you know, just like in painting and, and music, there's somebody out there who's better than you. I don't care who you are. There's someone around the corner and, you know, put his shoe, you know. Uh, so it, as soon as you think you've got it under, you know, control, that's the end of it. So I always like to think everything I paint, um, I look at and go, you know, well, it's okay, but, uh, you know, and this and that. Um, and I, that's good. That little bit of doubt is what makes you want to keep improving. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, and I, I agree. I absolutely agree. Um, you have other hobbies. You said you played the trombone. What else? Yes, I'm, my, my degree is in music, um, uh, jazz and classical trombone. So I've done that you know, probably up until about 14 years ago. That was my life. I, mean, I, I, I gigged and taught privately uh, trombone lessons in low brass uh, and that's all I did. Uh, I sell real estate now. I got my real estate license and, uh, and now the oil painting. So it's kind of my my career is, you know, one third painting, one third real estate and one third uh, performing. Which I love to do. I just never give up the music. It's, it's a lot of fun. And it ties together with the art world. As well. I have a lot of respect for people that can, um, you know, do anything with a musical instrument. I always tell people I can't even play the kazoo. So I, I have a lot of respect. <laughs> Hey, because this can be difficult, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think all of us are required to have somebody that sort of inspires us in the art world. So who inspires you? Well, I mean, obviously, uh, Bob Ross created my, you know, uh, joy of painting and wanting to be able to do it. Uh, I watch a lot of Bill Alexander. Um, uh, the, you know, those two were huge influences. Of course, Dana, Jester and Steve Ross, you know, meeting them, painting with them, Justin Wozniak. Uh, those guys, um, other inspire, inspirational artists. Um, one of the first guys I met when I went on to Instagram, uh, you know, four or five years ago, uh, was a, a artist named Andy Sherman. I don't know if you know Andy or not. He's on like the happy, some of these uh, Facebook uh, Bob Ross sites. Uh, and I, but I met him on Instagram. I just remember when I went to his page, and I, I wasn't a very good painter at all at the time, and showing, you know, people just like, wow, look at the, look at these guys paint the color, you know, and the just, you know, I was just totally blown away by it. And he had had hundreds and hundreds of paintings on there. Um, and you know, so Andy was, a, he's a friend of mine. We've never met, but we're friends of mine. Uh, he was a big influence. Uh, J.D. Wayne, uh, I don't know if you know J.D., the rock and roll painter. Uh, you can check him out, you know, uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, wherever. J.D. has been a great influence on me. And he's an all around artist in any medium, whether it's charcoal, you know, Bob Ross style. Um, he's fantastic. Uh, uh, and Bram, Bram, Bram Bevins is a fantastic artist. And, uh, you know, when I first came onto the social media as a beginner, he was, you know, pretty far ahead. Uh, and uh, his paintings were always very inspiring, too. <clears throat> what is your favorite sort of landscape to paint? Um, you know, I like doing them all. I, I to obviously uh, love painting mountains, and I know everybody says that. Uh, it's, uh, it's, they're just so much fun. Uh, I would say mountains or, or, or landscapes that have a lot of foliage. Uh, I love to paint the bushes and the, you know, and get the layers going. Um, it's cool, you know, how you can create the effects in this technique. Uh, but mountains are probably my favorite. Mountains are like, you're, it's a puzzle, yet you decide where the pieces go. You know, you're not searching, you know, you're like, okay, I'm gonna put a piece here, I'm gonna put a piece here. So when I paint a mountain, you know, I will you know, put in my basic shape, um, you know, do my highlights, do my shadows, but not too super detailed with lines and then step back and then come in 
and add the little little different the jaggy edges and do you know add that drizzle the dark color in um pull a little snow over this cap you know and that takes time you, know, you step back and you look and, and come back to it and uh so there yeah the absolute most fun is painting the mountains because again like i said it's that putting that puzzle together uh stepping back and saying oh yeah right here and just coming in and not rushing that's it's important too. Mm -hmm. I, I think second to practicing, stepping back from your work as an artist is one of the most important things you can do. Absolutely. You've got to, everything you do, whether it's a cloud or the sky and the water, as you do it, you got to go back five, 10 feet, because especially mountains. You know, when you're right up on your mountain, it just looks like someone, you know, into, you know, but if you, as you go back, it's like, oh, okay. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Absolutely. Step back all the time. Yeah, mountains are cool that way too, because you're right, when you step back, when you're up close to it, you're like, oh, it's big, up the paint, you step back and you're like, oh. Yeah, those <laughs> cool. and smears and droops and bloops all kind of come into focus when you step back and it makes sense. Yeah. Um, is there anything that was particularly easy for you when you first started oil painting? I think um, for me, the painting part, judging from that, <laughs> was not easy, but for me, perspective was easy. You know, even if you look on some of my er earlier paintings, because um, I think perspective, you either have it or you don't. I don't know if you can learn it. I think you can learn it a little bit, but to have, you know, like flat water lines, um, uh, not, you know, not having your water go this way or that way or just the way things lie is, I think, innate. Um, and I don't know that everybody has that, but I always had that. I knew it where it should go. I just wasn't sure how to put it there. And that's, you know, where the painting comes. I was um, blessed with the honor um, very recently to interview Faye Fletcher, and she said, you know, that that was her thing. Perspective was easy, too. And I said exactly what you just said. Basically, you either have it or you don't. Yeah. yeah. And you can see it in the paintings where people, the perspectives off. And maybe they make a good tree and a good bush or rock, but perspective's not there. And it, it plays with your eye. You know, and you go, wait a minute. That's not quite right. And then there's other people maybe who don't have the skill to paint as good of a mountain or a tree, but their perspective is fantastic. And it kind of balances it out. Sure. Um, I'm part of some of these Facebook groups, you know, and um, every now and again, somebody will put a picture on there and they'll be like, help me. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And it looks it's like it's all about perspective. And so I just run to the kitchen with a piece of paper and I draw, OK, this is what you painted. This is what you need to do. And I do that all the time. And my husband's like, maybe people think you're mean and critical. I was like, every single time I do it, I do it kindly. And everybody's always like, thank you so much. I wasn't getting it. But now I do. Yep. And it's important to do that. It's important, I think, online. Um, especially in these Facebook sites. And a lot of people will post a painting and you know, ask for a critique or whatever. Or a lot of times I get, I get messages from so many people who uh, you know, say, how did, you know, how did you do this? How did you do that? And it's important to, to help those people. You know, I, you know, I don't have any problem. I spend many hours where you know, I get messages or take someone under your wing or mentor somebody. You know, I have you know, at least four or five people like that who message me quite a bit. And, and I enjoy it and I enjoy helping them. And if they say, hey, man, how did you get this highlight to stick like that? Or how did you, you know, I have no problem sharing what I know. Um, it, you know, if, if it makes them happy and it makes their paintings better, you know, I think, you know, all the more power. Um, but I enjoy doing that. And uh, again, it's important to help out the other artists, uh, especially if you know. And it's nothing they can't figure out eventually. But hey, man, it's what, what I wish I had when I started was someone I could, hey, how did you do this? You know? Um, you know, I, I was just winging it, <laughs> just like most people, you know, we're just kind of, uh, we don't have uh, the answers and we're, it's just trial and error, you know, and then, and that's how I learned was just through trial and error. But it's, it's very important to, I think, to share your knowledge with others and, and to help them out. Yeah. Um, anything that was specifically really difficult when you first started? Um, I would say, uh, may, maybe color mixing. I'm, you know, I'm not much, and I'm still not today, uh, an expert color mixer. I just, you know, I kind of, I mean, I know what certain colors will make certain colors, but if, if you said, make me a, you know, a super light magenta, I'd be like, <laughs> you know, I, uh, but what I do is uh, uh, just kind of dib and dab. But uh, so color mixing has always been difficult. And try, again, trying to figure out, okay, what makes a brown, what makes a green, what, what does this? So that can be trouble. And the liner brush um, was always my nemesis and I always avoided it. Um, I use it a lot more now. Um, but yeah, at first, yeah, not a not a fan of liner brush. So because to me that goes almost back to drawing. Yeah. You know, um, where the other brushes, and that's why I, I love this Bob Ross style so much, was because it was the first 
I always loved art. I always wanted to draw. I tried to draw. And in elementary, I'm drawing a football guy and the guy next to me, I'm like, whoa, look at him. And you look at mine, it'd be terrible. But that, you know, that's uh, that liner brush. Uh, you're more you're more drawing in with in the Bob style. You know, you're kind of putting some splotches in there. And then with your right highlight, you're touching and then you got a bush, you know, so it's like, hey, I can do that. You know, I'm not having to draw the bush. You know, I'm just kind of pushing and hitting and I got a bush there. So, but yeah, the liner brush is, is my nemesis. for sure. Yeah. Did you sort of get that hammered down? Yes, it's gotten much better. And, and that goes to practice. Um, I still don't use it as much as I should. Sometimes I get to, a, to the front of a painting and it's and maybe it's looking great. I mean, I think it's OK. You know, I never think they look great, but I, I feel like we're going well. And then, OK, do I want to plop that big limb coming over the front and over the water? You mess it up. <laughs> you know, it, it's those are hard. Those are mistakes that are hard to get away. That tree that's covering. But, yeah, I've gotten more confident with that. Um, I, I still don't uh, use it as much as I should, but I spent a lot of, as I was saying, a lot of time practicing with it, just taking a big canvas out dry and just with some liquid black or and, and just, you know, just sit there and make 100 trees, you know. Uh, and just keep going branch after branch after branch. That's the best way with anything. Uh, but it, yes, it's, it's gotten better, but it still needs work. Um, I had a hard time with that too. And what I've really figured out is it's really, it's your consistency, obviously, but it's also about having the right brush, you know? Yes. Um, that's, that's huge, you know? And I found a couple that are really, really good that <laughs> help a lot. So. Yeah, my old, all my old liners uh, were Bob Ross and they just... They just splay every, I get a new one and, and I clean them, you know, but they would just splay a lot. Um, I got the Kevin Hill liner and that's when my, my uh, liner brush improved tremendously because it's, you know, it's an inch long. So it's got a really, and it always stays in a point. So it's, it's um for me, that's been a savior is that, that Kevin Hill. And I'm sure there's other good ones out there too. But that's one that I got there. I was like, okay, I, I can use this. Uh -huh. um, I use a Princeton Aspen airliner brush. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, manicurist brushes. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, they're really fine. Some of those manicurist brushes are really long, and it's like they have five hairs in them. So, yeah. I'll it's, have, it's, it's yeah. Little things. Yeah, I'll definitely check those out. Yeah, I'm always looking for help, so I have no yeah. problem. <laughs> I overused my liner brushes. They're too much fun once I figured it out. Um, let's see. Um, do you have a favorite painting that you've done of your own? Um. I probably have a couple that, that I really like. Um, I wouldn't say there's one uh, si single painting, um, uh, but I definitely, there's a few. I, I don't, I sell pretty much everything I paint, so I don't, I have kept some. I mean, of course, I have some from the first couple of years that no one would want to buy, um, but everything from the last two to two and a half years, almost everything I painted has sold, um, save maybe three that I set, three or four that I set aside that I felt were uh, paintings that, I took a big step, uh, like after the the uh, Steve Ross workshop, the um, the one I did when I got home was one of the better ones I had done, and I, I did not, uh, you know, I kept that. And I have like two others that I've kept, um, but I don't really get an emotional attachment to them because even if it's a, a decent painting, you know, and you know, I'm like, ah, do I sell it? You know, it's like, well, in six months, I'm going to be able to paint circles around this, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. So it's like, you know, and if I miss it that much, I'll just paint it again. So yeah, I don't really get too attached to them. I know some people do, and that's fine. Um, but yeah, I paint them and I, I post them and let everybody know they're available. And uh, nine times out of ten, they sell. Mm -hmm. um, I have some that I paint and I absolutely love them. And then when somebody else looks at them and then they're like, "This is the one," it's like it brings me a lot of joy because it, you know, sure. it's like I love it now. Somebody else can love it too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's you know, it's quite flattering. Yeah, I would have never imagined in a million years four years ago that I put a painting up and usually within a week, you know, someone grabs, I, or, you know, I couldn't imagine selling one painting. I just did this for fun. It was, it was fun to paint. And I know when you're starting your first couple, you know, uncle Joe, or, you know, they're, yeah, oh, we'll buy it. And I'm like, you want to buy this, <laughs> you know, um, you know, and, and, you know, they're being nice and, and that's cool, but yeah, it's very flattering, you know, and that, and it puts the pressure on too. I, I have a lot of paintings I've done where, one will sell and then someone will ask, hey, that last one, is that still available? And I'm like, ah, oh, you just missed that. That one sold. Uh, but I'll paint it again. You know, I'll say, I can paint it again for you. Um, and they're like, yeah. And, and I let them know I, I can't get it identical, but it will be close. But I have one, I have a couple of paintings I've done two or three times and I have one I've done five times. And if someone asked for a sixth time, I do it again. But it, it's, it's definitely not as fun once 
you know, it's not as creative, you know, when you're copying one of your old, and then you're a little worried, I got to make sure it's, you know, it's much more fun just to go down and start slinging paint. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. What do you think your art future looks like? You know, I, I, I so enjoy painting. Um, would it be great to make it, you know, my career, you know, uh, just to be able to paint? Sure. And is that a goal? Yeah, I, I could see that maybe happening. It's a lot of work. Um, I have other things that, that, that I enjoy doing as well. But, you know, as long as I can continue to paint and continue to improve and, uh, you know, people like my work and they buy it, um, you know, I'm happy with that. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be my job, but, you know, definitely want to paint as much as I can um, and, you know, and have people enjoy it. And uh, if they want to buy, they can buy. If they want to look, they can look. But uh, painting is, is, as you know, it's such a pleasure. It just puts you uh, out of the world. You know, if you're down there for three hours, five hours, whatever, um, that time is the world's gone. And it's just just that focus and painting is, you know, as you know, it's super, super enjoyable and relaxing. I wish I would have started. I wish I would have started painting before I started losing my hair. I'd probably have more hair. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, do you ever pair your um, real estate stuff with your painting, like um, staging a house with one of your pictures and being like it's for sale? <laughs> no, but I have used uh, paintings as settlement gifts. Okay. So, yeah, if I have a seller or a buyer, uh, you know, I, you know, and I, you can buy them a gift or something. But a lot of times, I'll gift paintings and. Um, then a lot of people I've, that I have gifted some paintings to in the past generally will usually will end up buying one at some point. Um, so, you know, th that helps. And, you know, you put one of your paintings on their wall, someone comes in their house and sees it. So I guess anytime you can get a painting out there and someone hangs it, it's an advertisement for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how many pieces do you think you've painted since you started? Hmm. I was just talking with, uh, uh, you know, Dylan Lordich. Uh, yeah. Chatting with Dylan, he asked me the other day, "How many paintings you painted?" I, you know, I really don't know. I don't count them. Uh, I want to say I probably painted maybe 350 to 400, somewhere in there. You know, uh, but I, I don't count them. I don't put a number on them. Um, but probably in that range. I know I have like 230 posted on Instagram, so at least 230. But there's definitely some that I did not post. You know, my first couple of years that I didn't post any of those. Uh, so I would probably say about 350, 400. I think I paint too much. <laughs> you got about a thousand. <laughs> yeah, I painted for um, just about two years now, and I've painted about 1,300 pieces in that oh, time. Wow. So I think I have a problem. <laughs> Very impressive. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I could sit and paint all day, every day. Even when I go on vacation, I take painting with me. It's, it's become a thing. <laughs> wow, that's great. Yeah, and I would certainly like to do that. And, you know, there's times where I paint more and times maybe where I paint a little less, depending how busy I am and what I have going on. I do a lot of, uh, I teach a lot of online lessons. Um, so that, that is also a time taker. And if I have, you know, I've had some weeks where I'll have two or three of those, you know, at three straight days. And those are three, sometimes four, sometimes they go to five hours. You know, they can, you know, depending on the student, they can take a little longer than you. you so that sometimes that will take a lot of my time. And, and even though I will post those, um, like a lot, some of my paintings you've seen on uh, TikTok or, or even on, on Facebook are, were painted during online lessons. You know, and sometimes those turn out better for some reason. I don't, I don't know why, but um, yeah, doing uh, it's just again finding the time to be able to uh, to paint more uh, is is a more difficult thing. But it's uh, uh, hopefully here soon I'll be painting more and more and more. Before I forget to ask you this, how would somebody go about getting a private lesson with you online? Um, they can message me, uh, you know, through Facebook, uh, through my oil painting page um and uh, or through instagram and just inquire and i can give them all the details and i'd be more than happy to help out anybody awesome um let's see what advice do you have for people who are just getting started i would say a couple two things um a couple things i know a lot of people say just get cheap paint you know and don't worry about it. but if you're if you're going to do this bob ross wet on wet bill alexander wet on wet style you do need a thick paint you don't have to break the bank but you're going to struggle with an oily paint. Now, some people, if you're very talented, can get around that. But um, a good paint is important. You know, it, it, especially breaking snow on a mountain, um, it, you need that thick underpaint. And then your highlight colors can be a little more runny because they're going to be one of them a little more thin. But it's important to have a good paint. So, you know, definitely get a decent paint. Again, you don't have to break the bank, but a decent paint. Find someone who paints in this style 
and chew their ear off. You know, I wish I had that when I first started where I could say, hey, you know, how do I do this? How do I do that? Um, that's really important. Uh, and third, believe it or not, is invest the money, if you can, in a good easel. When I, uh, I use a Bob Ross easel. Um, I've used a couple of them. When I started, it was a metal. It didn't even have the top holder. You know, it, it just sat there. It's impossible in this style. You can't without, you have to have that secure. Then I went to the, the screw top one that comes down with just a little, but that overhangs, you know, on your painting. Um, those are okay. Uh, but again, the painting flopped out constantly. And then I got a stand up one just like that. Same issue. Once you start pounding on it, it comes out. The Bob Ross easel for me has been uh, a godsend. The, the screw tips that hold it in place, you can beat it. You, know, you can smack that thing. It's not going anywhere. And that stability will make you a better painter. When I got mine, I instantly became a better painter because, you know, when I'm when I'm tapping in or whatever, especially highlights, there's no jiggle. You know, there's no there's no brush slide. It it having that canvas secure, uh, again, like I said, made me instantly made me a better painter. Um, and it's very difficult when you're even touching and it's it's doing this, you know, just from one side or you go up to a corner, you know, any any time you touch, if it's jiggling around on you, you're going to get that sliding of the brush. And that's not what you want you know, unless you're smearing it in. But uh, a good you easel. You don't want to be fighting with your easel. No, no. Yeah. And that's what I found myself doing quite a bit. Again, if you're if you're a watercolor painter, no, it's not going to matter, you know, but if you're doing this wet on a wet style you need a secure canvas so however you can get it secure is fine but that will help you as a painter absolutely yeah absolutely great advice um anything that you wish you had known when you started i guess we kind of touched on that yeah um again i, I wish uh, maybe uh that's a good question um i wish i would have been able to uh again have a mentor someone i could uh, pick their brain about uh i think that's uh, that would have been really nice. Um, uh, having, uh, you know, I think it's easier today too. I mean, with all the, the videos and everything that's out there, uh, it's much easier uh, to to get help and, and get information. Um, but that was the biggest thing, maybe to have someone to ask, you know, what the heck am I doing here? <laughs> Why is this not working? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. Okay, so I have a few. I, I like to ask people bonus questions. I don't. I don't forewarn them about them at all. So, um, I have a couple for you. The first one: um, Is there any hobby or activity that you have always wanted to try but have never done? Um, yeah, actually, probably. Uh, I would actually, and this is kind of silly, but uh, like clay pigeon shooting. You know, whoosh, whoosh. I, I've never shot a gun in my life. But I've always wanted to try that. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, <laughs> it looks like fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Unless you're a terrible shot like me, then it's not so much fun. But yep. I do it anyway. Um, OK, so I added, added a couple questions as we were going through this. How do you find ways to keep each piece sort of original? Um, yeah, that's difficult to do, too. Uh, you know, landscape, you know, mountain, you know, foothills, water, you know, Peninsula, peninsula. Yeah, it, it's very difficult to do, no doubt. Um, I don't uh, paint any bobs or anybody else's anymore. I haven't for a couple of years. Now, if I have an online lesson and someone wants to do season 20 episode, whatever, yeah, that's fine. We'll do that. But when I go to paint, I, I don't uh, copy anymore. But again, that influence is there. I mean, it's hard to, to take that away. So, you know, sometimes I like to, uh, even though I'm not a great sketcher, I can certainly pull out a piece of paper and I'll do this, not all the time, but you, sit, you know, maybe I'll put... Uh, uh, you know, let's put a big mountain here and then and kind of just map it out. It'll look terrible. But, you know, just so I get a general idea and it, it, it's not to uh, uh, try and stay away from the even though, again, we'll, we'll we all end up doing it. But just kind of the standard Bob Ross that you see with the mountain, the foothill, the water, the right peninsula, left peninsula um, and uh, try and change the angles. I, I maybe is another thing instead of everything side to side, you know, like bottom left to back right or this way or you know, just, you know, what, whatever. Uh, sometimes creatively, I think if you have a plan and you sketch it, that can really help. Other times, I, it's great just to go down there with no idea and just start going. And at the worst case, scrape it off, you know. But sometimes it's fun. You always say, oh, I can't put that right there. Well, why not? You know, throw it in there. If it doesn't look good, scrape it off and, and you know, try some. So, yeah, just try new things, you know. Um, I think that that's uh, important is just try not to get stuck into the typical landscape. And again, we all do it. You know, it's very difficult not to. 
but uh, just you know, try and be as, as fresh as possible. I, I like to take, you know, as you know, Bob Ross always says, when I'm outside and I see something looks cool, take a picture of it. I mean, my phone has hundreds of pictures that we're supposed to be painting. So, you know, you just can't get to them all. So uh, I, that's the biggest thing too, is, you know, look at what's outside your door and paint that. Uh, whether it's the ocean or, or wherever you are. Um, and that will help keep it fresh too. Yeah, it's a tough thing to do. Um, the other thing I wanted to sort of ask you about is, um, for you to sort of talk about some of the interactions that you do with people online and I guess um, how you keep up with that. Yeah, um, they almost made it. <laughs> it's, yeah, um, it takes a lot of time, um, but I, I enjoy helping people. And again, someone will, someone will message and, you know, how did you do this or how did you do that? Um, and I'll certainly share it. I mean, if I can at that moment, I'll say, hey, I'll get back to you. Um, I'm busy now or, or whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, it's difficult. I try and do them as they come in. You know, you got your phone and it's ding, 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 ding. You know, you're, you're opening it up and all the comments are coming in and just, you know, I look at it as part of my job, you know, to to respond to everybody. And uh, yeah, it takes time. Um, but, you know, I enjoy it, you know, uh, but I just try and take them as they come in. Um, and you definitely have to sit down a little time. You go, OK, I got to respond to everybody. Um, another thing is, and I'm sure, you know, especially with Instagram, uh, Facebook, too. You know, it's important, you know, that algorithm will work to you when you're interacting as well. You know, when you keep that conversation flowing, so this is for people, maybe for some advice when they're doing their websites, when someone says thank you and you get that list, go back to it, you know, it, it, jump right on it immediately. You know, you hold that conversation open for another second or two and that gets recognized and then you're going to have, it generally does, and you'll have that then, you know, Instagram or Facebook will recognize that and give you more exposure on your on your post. And, and again, as I said before, and more importantly is if they, someone takes the time and, you know, you touch them with your painting, take five seconds and put thank you very much. You know, it's, it's easy to do. They appreciate it. And then, you know, you are, you're grooming a you know, potential customer for yourself one day, you know, uh, and that's how you, you know, keep your followers and keep them engaged is by, and that's, that's part of, I guess, the business side is, um, you know, when you get followers, you have to cultivate them, you know, you have to, you have to engage with them and they like that. Um, and that will make you more likable and personable. Um, and hopefully in the end, if you're looking to sell your artwork and most artists are, that, that's a good thing. And you make a lot of good friends. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we're about done. Do you have any sort of final thoughts that you'd like to share with the world before we um, finish? Yeah. Well, thank you again for having me. I've enjoyed it. Um, yeah, paint, you know, I, I say to all these people, go out and paint, you know, paint something. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, it will soothe your soul. Uh, it's good for you, uh, for your mind. Uh, so, you know, no matter what it is, pick up a brush, some paint and, and enjoy, enjoy life and, and put something on canvas. Uh, it's important and um, it makes you, it makes you feel better. As you know, it makes you uh, feel good inside when, when you can, when you can produce something. Uh, I'm just very grateful for all the people, uh, you know, who have uh, liked and, and watched and uh, purchased my art. It's very humbling. So. I'm very blessed and, and very thankful for that. Yeah, absolutely. Good final words. Um, and thank you again for coming on. It's always great when I get somebody who's willing to let me pick their brain. So I, I really do appreciate it very much. Well, so. Thank you for having me, Gabby. I appreciate it. So if people were looking for you online, where could they find you? Uh, you can go to Instagram at Jeff's Oil Paintings, TikTok the same at Jeff's Oil Paintings, and Facebook at Jeff's Oil Paintings. All the same. Soon to be on YouTube. Okay, guys, so I think that's it for our show today. If you guys have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section of the video and we'll do our best um, to address them. Um, I'm Gabby, this is Jeff. And um, make sure that you guys hit him up on TikTok, um, follow him and uh, check back to this video later on because he's promised he's gonna set up some YouTube so we can get him on that side too. So um, I guess that's it. Until next time, guys, I really do hope that you fall in love with oil painting just as much as we have. Bye. Mm -hmm.